after the pitch. You got to stay in the box, basically. One foot. I call that bull. <laughs> <laughs> when you force a hitter to do that, 70% you are out because you don't have no time to think. And the only time you have to think about things is that time. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know how, how this baseball game is going to end up. But do you understand them trying to speed up the pace of the game? There's no way. It don't matter what they do, the game is not going to speed up. That's the bottom line. When you argue for a pitch that they got to go and review it, that takes some time. Is that our fault? No, it's their fault. But we still got to play the game. It's it's only a $500 fine. You think you just pay the money? Well, right, I might run out of money. <laughs> <laughs> Period. I got it. I got it. I'm not going to change my game. I don't care what they say. My game is one. I'm going to gonna keep it that way. I, it's not like I go around and, and do all kinds of stupid <laughs> but I got to take my time to think about what they guys are going to do against me. And I'm pretty sure every single hitter at this level is in the same page. Because they, 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 they pull their rules together, but they don't talk to us. I said, here, how do you feel about this? You know what I'm saying? Why don't you come and ask questions first? And then we get into an agreement. But just like, oh, you got to do this just because I say so? Oh, but it doesn't work that way. Trust me. You but think there are other ways to speed up the game besides just... Of course. It's not on us. It seems like every time they want to speed up the game, they focus on the hitters. Have you noticed that? How about the pitchers that go around the mound and do all that bull <laughs> about that? Why don't you tell the pitcher, throw the pitcher and stay in the mound. Don't move. How about the guy in the mound that is like this for three hours? <laughs> that counts? I face guys that I'm like, come on, man, make a pitch. <laughs> that, do that count? Nobody talk about that, right? So I don't think it's fair. That's the that, that bottom line. All right, Major League Baseball implementing new rules to speed up the game, including clocks to time in between pitches. And as you heard, hitters must keep one foot inside batter's box in some instances. David Ortiz, long, long rant. Nothing wrong with that, I guess. Skip Bayless, does he have a point? You know, Stephen A., that was a, an amusing monologue that ultimately I found very, very sad. David Ortiz is so immersed in the game of baseball, he has no idea how wrong he really was in his monologue. If David Ortiz loves baseball as much as he seems to, then he would gladly help save the game of baseball by embracing one of the new time-saving rules. Obviously, baseball needs to, one, keep batters in the batter's box, and number two, to David Ortiz's point, they need to put a clock on the pitchers between pitches. <sighs> did you read, Stephen A., I think you did, because I think we mentioned it before the show, Mark Cuban's quotes of yesterday about extending the duration of the NBA season, not the number of games, but just to eliminate the NBA back-to-backs, by extending the length of the NBA season, which might leak into July. It might go past July the 4th, the NBA Finals. What was Mark Cuban's point? The NBA is no longer threatened nationally by baseball TV ratings. The NBA now thinks it could compete with its NBA Finals against whatever national baseball game you want to throw up against the NBA. Because, to quote Mark Cuban, and he's correct about this, baseball has become a regional sport. Baseball in this country is slowly dying. It hurts me to talk about it because I grew up, as you grew up, a huge baseball fan. I was first a baseball fan before I was a football or a basketball fan. The kids today find baseball mostly boring. It takes too long because the batters step out of the box too much and fidget and redo their batting gloves too much and the pitchers shake off too many signs and step off the mound too much. So something has to be done to address that. David Ortiz, you're a great left-handed hitter, especially in the postseason. But Mr. Ortiz, the greatest left-handed hitter I ever saw, the greatest player I ever saw, was this fellow named Barry Bonds. And not sure what video we're in right now, but 
If we could please see what Barry Bonds used to do in the batter's box, he anchored his left foot and he never left the batter's box. He didn't care. He didn't need to think about what pitch was coming next. He was already two moves ahead of the pitcher. He stayed in the batter's box and said, throw me another one as fast as you want to throw it to me. So that should have set the example for what baseball should become today. Today's players should break the habit of needing to step out of the box and fidget and fix and redo their batting gloves. They should stay anchored to speed up and help save a game that the younger generations are moving farther and farther away from. Your thoughts? Skip Bayless, I get where you're coming from, and I don't disagree with the premise that David Ortiz needs to pay attention to what has transpired in the sport of baseball and, as a, re as a result, assist in helping move the game forward because the Na America's national pastime is lagging a bit behind not just the NFL, but obviously the NBA to a larger degree, which is why Mark Cuban felt free enough to say what he said. But I would remind you that you are talking about a man in Big Poppy, David Ortiz, that has 466 career home runs, that has won several World Series titles, which Barry Bonds has never won, that has, had a, that has a career 1,533 RBIs, that has been a DH, that has been a proven producer and big game player in the sport of Major League Baseball for some time. So what I would ask you respectfully is to accord this man the respect that he deserves. You are bringing up Barry Bonds. Who the hell is Barry Bonds? The best. You can't bring up the best and measure everybody by him. Barry Bonds kept his left foot locked in his right foot locked in, rather, because he didn't have to do anything else because he was that great. Now, as great as Big Poppy is, he ain't no Barry Bonds, never was. But guess who else wasn't Barry Bonds? How about nobody? How about nobody, Skip? How about in all the years of America's national pastime, from the days of Babe Ruth to, to Joe DiMaggio and Lou Gehrig and Mickey Mantle okay. and, 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 and to the friend of Mark McGuire and Reggie Jackson? I mean, the list goes on. This is Barry Bonds. Okay, so? So you bringing up Barry Bonds yeah. and saying, well, he didn't do that. Well, well that's Barry Bonds. Okay. He, you... he, he could do things okay. that almost no one could do. So you bringing him up, it's like, what are you talking about? That's like getting on somebody because you know what? They didn't play as well as Michael Jordan. Well, why don't you just, no. just ban the NBA? It, it's Michael Jordan. He was he, showing he you about? how the game should be played. He was setting a standard minute, no, that others no, should have followed. No, no, yes. No, no, he wasn't. He was he was showing you how great he was. Barry Bonds was not setting a standard because no one measures up to the standard. Even before PEDs and all of this stuff, this dude was walking 30-30. Nobody could do that. You didn't see people doing that skip. Mark McGuire wasn't even in his class. Okay. Couldn't even touch him. Neither could Sammy Sosa. I mean, you talk about when they went with the Pittsburgh Pirates, you had Bobby Bonilla on there, okay, with Barry Bonds. And as good as Bobby Bonilla was, he paled in comparison to Barry Bonds. This is this dude right here may have been the greatest hitter in the history of the game. No, he was. So when you bring him up, I'm saying, yeah. well, when you bring him up, how are you going to... Who measures up to that? Okay, but we, we hear every day about playing the game the right way. We hear it often in basketball from the Larry Browns. There's only one Larry Brown, but we hear it from Larry Brown. Barry Bonds, play, again, you can say what you want about him off the field and with the PED and sure. all that, but, but when it came to playing the game, and I covered Barry Bonds in San Francisco, he played it the right way. He showed who you... Who else did it? Who else what? Did... Did, who else did what he did? Who else? Okay, I'm, just, I'm not talking about hitting the baseball. He just showed you you can do it this way and it'll work. He, he could, that, that's how you should do it. That's how his father did it. Skip. Bobby Bonds. Skip. Stay in the batter's Skip. box. No. Make whoa, the game whoa, whoa. go. According to Skip Bayless, according to Skip Bayless, Barry Bonds was not just the greatest hitter 
He was one of the most brilliant baseball players you had ever seen. I've listened to you rave about Barry Bonds for years. One of the things you highlighted was that he didn't need to prep, even as hard as he worked and as much of a workout warrior as he was. He didn't need to prep the way other players did. No, he, he didn't. Could see cerebrally. No, no, he you studied. Could, he could see cerebrally. Studied hard. What other people? I didn't. Okay. I wasn't saying he would have study okay. hard. I'm saying that was natural to him. I'm saying mm -hmm. you raved about the fact okay. that he just knew instinctually as well, regardless of the studying, he knew instinctually what to expect. He knew what pitches, pitches were going to throw. He knew what they were going to come at them with. This dude was a brilliant baseball guy. Okay. Maybe I'm, Big Poppy is not that. Okay, I'm just trying to show you. Let, let's take it the other way. Let's go to the mound. Who was my favorite player growing up? The great Bob Gibson. Remember Bob Gibson? St. Louis Cardinals? Yes, I do. Dominating yes, right-handed pitcher. What did he do? What was he known for? He was known for pitching shutouts in under two hours. Why? Because he said, throw me the damn ball. to the Just Tim McCarver, get, give me, I want the ball right back, and I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go again. Get, in the, get back in the box. I'm going to throw you another one. Okay? How many he's Bob showing Gibson's you how it can be done. He's showing you how to make the game think, go fast. And I'm telling you, and I'm telling you, you are disrespecting the greatness of those guys by bringing that up because you're acting like everybody can do what they can do. Most guys can't be Bob Gibson. Don't, Most don't we guys try to can't emulate be the Barry best? Bonds. Again, we're talking about speed if, of play if here. You can. Yeah. If you can. Oh, so you're saying today's what, what players need to take way more time. That's absurd. They don't need to take way more time. That. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you have to pay attention to what Big Poppy's point is because along the way, he smacked 466 home runs. He's doing something right. This is not a scrub talking to you about the sport of baseball. He's saying, how come y'all looking at us all the time? How come y'all let these pitchers get away with stuff? Why don't you focus on them? Why do they get to delay the game, but we can't? Why are you taking yet, yet taking something else away from the game to assist them? Why don't you try and assist us? Why don't you ask us for suggestions? Why don't you come and talk to us before you implement these rule changes? That is what he was saying. And to me, I think we should pay attention to that, too, because everybody doesn't have to be Barry Bonds in order to garner the respect yeah. that Big Poppy is alluding to. No. There's only one Barry Bonds. Okay, I'm, I'm just telling you that Poppy can't see that in future generations, baseball player poppies to come, they're not going to be able to make $20 million a year or whatever he's made in his past. He's made his money. This game is going to dry up at some point. All those kids up in Boston, right now you say, well, boy, you can't that. get a ticket to Fenway Park. Well, pretty soon, you yeah. know, it's, it's, it's going to be Gillette and it's going to be Boston Garden, and all of a sudden you can get tickets to Fenway Park. I agree Park, with you, you know? yeah. Okay. I agree with you there. All right, Jim. I agree with you there. May 1st is when uh, they can start charging Big Poppy $500 every time he steps out of the batter's box. It'll again, be interesting some, to see if they do that. Exactly. In some instances. Uh, he's, again, he said he might run out of money. We'll find out. Leave it there. Uh, discussion to be had later on. When we come back, we are going to talk about the wide receiving class, uh, the draft class that's coming up. Todd Mache releases his third edition of his mock draft. The gentleman will weigh in.